you know, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a, a business with a wide and long-lasting moat around it uh, surround, uh, and w protecting a terrific economic castle with an honest lord in charge of the castle. Uh, Mike Asale from New York City. Uh, in the mistake du jour section of the annual report, you mentioned a, a fundamental rule of economics that you missed. Um, I'd like to know the two or three most important fundamental rules of economics you habitually get right. Um, in other words, what are the fundamental rules of economics you used to make money for Berkshire? And, and I'm not talking about Ben Graham's principles here, but rather uh, rules of economics which may be found in, a, in, a, in an economics textbook. Thank you know, you. We, yeah, we try to, I mean, we, we, we try to follow Ben's principles in terms of the attitude we bring toward both investing and in buying businesses. But the most important thing you can, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a, a business with a wide and long-lasting moat around it uh, surround, uh, and w protecting a terrific economic castle with an honest lord in charge of the castle. And in, in, in essence, that's what business is all about. I mean, you may want to be the lord of the castle yourself, in, in which case uh, uh, you, you don't worry about that last factor. But what, you're trying to, what, what we're trying to find is a business that for one reason or another, it can be, it can be because it's the low-cost producer in some area, it can be because it uh, it has a natural franchise, because of service capabilities. It could, it could be because of its position in the consumer's mind. It can be because of a technological advantage, for any kind of reason at all, that it has this moat around it. And then our then, then what we have to decide is 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 all moats are are subject to attack in a capitalistic system. So everybody is going to try. If you've got a big castle in there, people are going to be trying to figure out how to get to it. And what we have to decide. And most most moats aren't worth a damn in in, you know, in capitalism. I mean, it, 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 that's the nature of it, and it's a constructive thing that that's the case. But we are trying to figure out what is keeping, why is that castle still standing, and what's going to keep it standing or cause it not to be standing five, ten, twenty years from now. What are the key factors, and how how permanent are they? How much do they depend on the genius of the lord in the in in the uh, Castle, and uh, and then if we feel good about the moat, then we try to figure out whether you know the Lord is going to try and take it all for himself, uh, or whether he's likely to do something stupid with the proceeds, etc. But that's that's the way we 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 look at businesses. And, um, uh, Charlie, you want to add anything? Well, I think he wants it translated into uh, the ordinary terms of economics. The honest lord is low agency costs. That's the word in economics. And the microeconomic business advantages are, by and large, advantages of scale, uh, scale of, of, of market dominance, which can be a retailer that just has huge advantages in terms of, of buying cheaper and, and uh, enjoying higher sales per square foot. So you, by and large, you're talking uh, economies of scale. You can have scale of scale of intelligence. In other words, uh, you can have a lord with enough extra intelligence that he has a a big advantage. So you're by and large, you're talking scale advantages and and and, and low agency costs. Yeah, to some extent, Charlie and I try and distinguish between businesses where. You have to have been smart once, and businesses where you have to stay smart. And uh, I mean, retailing is a good case of a business where you have to stay smart. But, uh, you can, uh, it, you are under attack all the time. People are in your store. If you're doing something successful, they're in your store the next day trying to figure out what it is about your success that they can transplant and maybe add a little something on uh, in, in their own situation. So you cannot coast in retailing. Uh, there are other businesses where you only have to be smart once, at least for a very long time. There was once a southern publisher uh, who, who was doing very well in, in, with his newspaper, and, and uh, someone asked him the secret of his success. 
and he said, uh, Monopoly and nepotism. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, he wasn't so dumb. I mean, it, 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 he didn't have any illusions about himself. And, and if, if, if you had a big network uh, of t television affiliates station 30 years ago, there's still a major difference between good management and bad management. I mean, a major difference. But you could be a terrible manager and, and uh, make a fortune, basically, because the one decision to own the network uh, TV affiliate overcame almost any deficiency uh, that existed from that point forward. And that would not be true if you were the first one to come up with some concept in retailing or something of the sort. I mean, you would have to be out there defending it every day. Uh, ideally, you know, is you want, you want terrific management at a terrific business, and that's what we, we look for. Uh, uh, but as we pointed out in the past, if you have to choose between the two, get a terrific business. <laughs>